My name is Thomas Rokicki, and I'm going to tell you how I solved the special cycle problem in the North American Championship 2021. In this problem, we are asked to find a cycle in a graph such that any edges marked special um, are always traversed if either of the vertices in that special edge are part of the cycle. So let's consider cases where specific nodes or vertices cannot participate in one of these legal cycles. Clearly, any vertex with more than two special edges cannot be part of the cycle, so we can remove it and the adjacent special edges. In addition, if a vertex has exactly two special edges incident to it, no ordinary edges from that vertex can be used, so we can remove those ordinary edges. So we perform these steps. Of course, in any graph, a bridge, which is an edge in the cycle, which if you remove it, it partitions the cycle. No bridge can ever be part of a simple cycle. So we remove those bridges. When we remove those bridges, and it consists of a, speci a special edge. If that bridge is a special edge, we must also remove the adjacent vertices. When we remove those adjacent vertices and their incident edges, we may create more bridges that need to be removed. So when we clean up the bridges in one of these graphs, we actually need to do it in a loop. And by the way, when I talk about bridges here, I'm also including trivial bridges, which are, you know, trees that hang off of it. Any edge that has got a degree of just one, I'm sorry, any vertex that has a degree of just one. There's an algorithm for locating bridges in a graph that takes time O sub n plus n. So this is still polynomial. So if we take care of all these cases, if what remains still has some edges, then a legal cycle must exist. And we will discuss what a proof, a proof of that later. But the problem requires us to actually find such a cycle. It's not enough to simply say one exists. So let's see how we can find such a cycle. Consider removing an edge. If we remove the edge, and then we remove any bridges that are so created and iterate until there are no more bridges, either we're left with a smaller two-connected graph, which we can then continue with, or the graph vanishes. If we, if we end with a smaller two-connected graph, because it's two-connected, we know there's going to be a cycle. So we can just continue with that and find the smaller cycle and return that. But if the graph vanishes, then we know this particular edge is required, and it turns out it will also be part of the eventual legal cycle that we return. So all we need to do is simply try to remove every single edge, and after we try to remove it, we remove all the bridges that are so created iteratively, including the special, si special edges that end up dangling. And if this leaves us with no edges, then oops, got to keep that edge. But if there's a smaller two-connected graph that returns, we can know that we can get delete that edge and just continue the process. The final result will always be a single simple legal cycle, which we simply print and return. Checking for bridges takes time O of m plus n, the number of edges plus the number of vertices because checking for bridges might remove a node in order to satisfy our special cycle removal. We may have to do this O of n times. And there are O of m edge removals that we need to check. So the overall runtime is O of m, n, m plus n, which if m is O of n squared, turns out to be O of n to the fifth. And the 300 O of n to the fifth is pretty big, but it turns out this actually runs in time because there's a lot of smaller constant factors attached to it. Now for the proof that any graph that is two connected and has no vertices adjacent to more than two special edges 
and no vertex with two special edges and one or more ordinary edge always has a legal cycle. Let's do this by induction on both the number of vertices and the number of edges. In our recursive step, we will always reduce the number of edges or the number of vertices or both. So we will always make a smaller graph in that sense. So the first thing we do is we turn any path of special edges into a single special edge. This is easy to do and it means that no two special edges are ever adjacent and this simplifies our analysis. If there are no special edges and the graph is too connected it clearly has a cycle. This is the base case. For the recursive case we pick any special edge label, we call it E, and we mark it ordinary and we find a cycle recursively, a legal cycle. If the found cycle doesn't ever touch E, then it's a legal cycle, we return it, we're done. If the found cycle goes through E, then marking E special keeps the cycle legal because those two other edges that E, to e is adjacent to in the cycle are not special. So we can return that cycle. If the found cycle touches E on both sides but doesn't traverse E, then again, either of the two arcs of the cycle, when combined with E, forms a legal cycle, which we can then return. The remaining case is if the cycle touches E once, but doesn't traverse it. In this case, neither of the edges of the cycle adjacent to E can be special, since E was originally marked as special. So what we do is we mark E special again, and then we take that found cycle and we shrink it down to a single node, which we call V. This graph is smaller. In this smaller graph, no special edge exits the node V, except E. And this is because if there was such an edge, then the cycle that we found would have been illegal, because there cannot be a special edge ex exiting a legal cycle. In addition, this reduction maintains the two connectivity of the graph. So now we have a reduced graph. We recursively find a legal special cycle, and we consider what that cycle looks like. If that found cycle doesn't touch V, it is a legal cycle in the original graph, and we're done. If it does touch V, then we expand V again. Inside of V, that found cycle traverses, can traverse one of two different arcs in the cycle we found before that go from E to where the newly found cycle exits. That's the cycle in the newly found cycle. One or both of these arcs, in conjunction with the original cycle we found, is guaranteed to be legal. The only case where one of those arcs would be illegal is if the last edge on that arc to where it exits V is adjacent to a special edge. This is always going to be on the found cycle. And in this case, selecting the other edge, the other arc, gives us a legal cycle, which we then can return. So this is a little bit complicated. There's a lot of cases, but it's not totally unreasonable. And to tell the truth, you didn't even need to prove it to get the problem correct, as long as you had the intuition that this might be the case, uh, if you were willing to take that chance. I hope you enjoyed this problem. I found it quite difficult, uh, but was able to eventually solve it. And I hope you did too.